everybody. Ha thanks for tuning in to my cable access show, Good Government with Michelle Dubois. I'm your state representative, Michelle Dubois, and every month I do two 30-minute shows on different topics that I think uh, the folks that live in Brockton might be interested in. And this one is kind of gross one. The people aren't gross, that's for sure. But the topic really gets people freaked out, and that is the topic of bed bugs. Woo. And I have two wonderful experts with me today. We have Owen Ahern from the Brockton Housing Authority and Greg Mayette, who is an entomologist and a site supervisor for Briggs Pest Control. Burgess. Pest Burgess. Yeah. What? See, I knew I was going to get one of them wrong. <laughs> Burgess Pet Control, which is a great, great company serving the city. And I asked these two gentlemen to come in today to talk a little bit about bed bugs because I'm getting a lot of constituents that have issues with them. So I'm wondering if you could just give a little background about yourself, gentlemen, and then we can um, talk a little bit about the bugs. Sure. So um, I'm Owen. I'm the Director of Maintenance for the Brockton Housing Authority. We have 16 developments, 2,000 units of public housing with the city's uh, largest landlord and uh, oversee a maintenance staff of 23 full-time maintenance people, uh, office staff, and a purchasing staff. How many units? Over 2,000. Wow, okay. <laughs> You've got a big job. Thank you. Greg Mayette, uh, service supervisor with Burgess Pest Management. I've been in the industry just about 15 years now and uh, certified entomologist. We service all of uh, Boston, South Shore, Cape Cod, Nantucket. So, uh, What's an entomologist? The study of insects. Insects, yes. all different types of insects. All different types, yes. And so if people, is, is, um, is Burgess in, what, what town is it in? Right in West Bridgewater, okay. right on South Main Street. That's right. Yeah, right so if people have any problems, they can just call over there. Absolutely. All right, so how long has the your company been around? Since 1929. That's a long time. Yep. So Family you have a owned lot and of, operated. Yes, so. I know both of the owners, yep. they're very nice people. Okay. So um, tell me a little bit about the bed bugs. What are they? How long, have, like why are they exploding now? Well, they're, they're a temporary parasite. Um, they are basically exploding now. It's not now, but over the past 10 to 15 years, we've really seen um, a population explosion that's due to international travel, things like that. Um, but they are temporary parasite that will take blood meals much like a tick will. Uh, it does not live on the body, but it will um, find harborage in houses and whatnot near sleeping quarters, chairs, etc. And take a blood meal and then detach, go back to its harborage, and the next blood meal it needs, it comes back out. So it's not like lice or scabies, they don't live on the body, they are just temporarily there. How fast do they move? Um, they can move quickly. I mean, really? I've not, never seen one. They don't jump, they don't fly, so they just crawl. But um, they can make their way across this table probably in you know, 40 seconds, 30 wow. minutes, I would say. So that's, that's a guesstimate, fast. but fast. Yeah, yeah they're, they're not super slow. So. Huh. Yeah. And have you, so you've been with the, oh, and you've been with the Housing Authority 15 years, I think you said? 17 years. 17 years? Correct. So have you seen an increase in the amount of bed bug issues? Have you always had them because there's so many units? We've probably always had them. It's um, the, the level we don't necessarily know all the time because they're not reported directly to us. Uh, we would hope that any resident with one or more pests would just call us. And that's for mice, roaches, right. or bed bugs. Right. That seems to be our biggest problem is that um, it's not self-reported enough. And from what I've he heard, because I've had some conversation with uh, Tom Tebow about this, because constituents have issues, and I report it to him, and he's just wonderful. He is. And he said that there, there used to be, and maybe there is still now, a little bit of a, like a stigma. People are afraid that if they report it, their neighbors will think that they're somehow to blame and that if they were just cleaner, it wouldn't happen. Can you talk a little bit about how people can pick up bed bugs and what happens? Sure. Uh, as you were saying earlier, it could be through transportation. So it could be that uh, you went to a, a place. It could be, you could pick them up at a hotel. You could actually pick them up at a movie theater, um, travel. You, if you're over a friend's house, you could bring them back with you. Or if they're coming to visit you, it could happen. It's not something that we look at like, who brought it there and why, right. we want to address the issue. We want to make sure that we do everything we can to um, get rid of the problem. So Burgess right. is actually one of our two vendors that we use. Mm -hmm. uh, we use two vendors to handle the city. So our office will then contact uh, the resident or someone will report it. Our residents will then be treated. We'll give them a list of what they have to do to prepare for an inspection and then we will follow through. What kind of things do people have to do to prepare? I think it's a pretty daunting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's it, it can be. Um, it's a pretty, you know, the prep sheet asks for laundry to be done and bagged, um, clutter and whatnot to be cleaned up uh, so we have access for treatment. 
Um, but there's a, there's a whole prep sheet that goes into it, and it can be daunting. And if people need help, there are resources that, to get people help prepping for that treatment if, if need be. What kind of resources? Like, say you're an 85-year-old lady. Maybe you're, you know, <laughs> some health issues or maybe some yeah. cognitive problems. How well, do they we work do with it? we work with the housing coordinators to oh. address, you know, those people. Uh, there are actually bed bug prepping companies that are out there that will take on really? that kind of work. Um, you know, and we're available to to help in a in a small capacity if it's if it's not, you know, the whole entire unit that needs to be done. But there are companies that actually specialize in that. So. Really. Yeah. So we'll ask either the asset manager. Uh, we have a manager for every site. We either ask them or a service coordinator that we hire to go through and assess the situation, whether the resident's capable, whether they have any family or friends that can right. assist them. And if not, uh, we do have uh, companies that we can or individuals that we can help to assist the prep. One of the things that they talk about is laundry, so making sure that your bed linens are washed and then cleaned. It has to go through a high cycle of heat. That's what I heard. Right. So they have to... What? So I've heard that you can bag them for a certain amount of days or put them in super heat hot. What do you do? Well, you want to you want to launder them and then bag them. The, the a bed bug will die at 122 <coughs> degrees. Um, so that's the critical point and that's, that's why high heat, yeah, mm -hmm. hot water wash and, and laundering under a high heat setting will will kill off any stages of bed bugs that may be living in a dresser for instance where those clothes oh. are just sitting in a dresser. Um, that's why we want those. We want to be able to treat those areas so the clothing can, can't be in there when we do a service. Oh, um, so everything comes out. Everything comes out. Bag. It's part of the preparation okay. to just make sure that that's laundered, it's clean, it's good to go. Now we can treat the areas where bed bugs may be harboring because oh. they're not necessarily just going to be in clothing um, unless they're in that dresser somewhere. So, but you brought up a good point about stigma, um, and that's what we try to address: is you know working with housing and giving tenant seminars, trying to give a little education that you know they're here they're, there's nothing to be right. ashamed of by saying that you have bed bugs um, the most important thing is just making sure that it gets reported and that people don't try to attempt treating them on their own with, with products over the counter because in many cases that will make it worse um, that will push them into areas that they normally wouldn't be um, when we come into a unit for instance we know there's going to be specific areas where they're going to be whether it be couch or bed or certain spots once people take it upon themselves to use over-the-counter products that will repel them into different areas and push them out of those harbored areas that they typically would be in, now the problem gets that much more difficult to get control of and, and they get pushed around and that's how they spread uh, again. Aside from just how they get brought in, that's how they get pushed around and spread in, inside a facility. So someone told me that some ways to kill it is some, and this seemed very strange to me, that you cordon off an area and you you make the area a hundred and something degrees i don't even know how that would be possible <laughs> but someone said that to me this well, is the thoughts those are treatment tactics there there are different ways that you know different companies go about treating for bed but bugs. do they do that yeah it's called thermal remediation yep that would be you know conventional is basically your typical liquid residual applications that right. that are done then there's thermal remediation which some kind sometimes will get recommended and that's where we take heaters into a unit um, we use our equipment and we heat that unit up to about a hundred 135 degrees. So you've done that before. Oh yeah, we oh. do thermal remediation. Yep. So that's part of part of the treatments. Depends on some situational things. But. So do you talk to like the the client about that? Yeah. Yeah. That's all part of the prep. There's a different preparation guide for that specific, you know, um, treatment strategy. So have you used that in the housing we have, authority? Yes. What, well, how do you come upon choosing between well, the two? There are some um, residents that can't have chemicals applied. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, or other health conditions that necess uh, necessitate that get the kind of one treatment rather than two or three treatments. Mm -hmm. And so the manager will coordinate that with a resident. And wow. Then, then we will set up with a vendor um, that they'll come in with their equipment. So I'm talking about the housing authority, yes. but really this is the same type of information that anybody in a home or Absolutely. apartment could... Yep. have to come into, right? Right. A homeowner, private landlord, same, same right. things. This is not so, uh, just to public housing. So when you treat one apartment, do you have to treat the apartments next door, above, below? What do you do? So typically what we do when we identify that there's an issue, uh, we will treat the unit above, unit below, and side to side. Oh, that's so, such a big <laughs> issue. Right, because you don't want them spreading, and they may have already spread. Right. So the, what typically we do in housing is once or twice a year, we go through all of the high-rises. They will go unit to unit to observe pests, right down, and they'll treat at the time. If they find any roaches or mice, they'll treat right then and there. And if bed bugs are identified, it takes more time to treat. And so they will basically make note of that, provide us with a report, and we'll set up with um, each resident, um, when they will be treated 
in work wow. with residents. Wow, wow. Do you do a lot of this work in Brockton outside of the Housing Authority? Oh yeah, we're every, yeah. every day we're out there doing bed bug work somewhere, whether it's Boston really? or anywhere around here. Residential, a lot of single residential. family homes? Um, th yeah, there are. I I'd say more of it is multi-unit developments um, just because you know people are sharing walls and again, if something doesn't go reported, the next person who gets them may report it and then that's right. why part of that is getting into those side to side units up and down to find out maybe the source was somebody else here that just didn't report something so that's why it's yeah. important. Yeah. I want to say probably like 15 years ago I was working in a nonprofit in Boston and one of the workers there she was blind and she was really smart really clean really wonderful and all of a sudden one of her coworkers is like she's like oh I've got these things on me and the coworker looks at her and she has all these crazy turned out to be bed bug bites all over her and because she's blind and she lived on her own she was very independent she didn't see the bed bugs yeah and uh, when the pest control company went in oh my god they yeah. were everywhere yeah. and I don't know if it was her that reported it or if a neighbor cuz she was living in an apartment and it wound up being uh, really hard because the neighbors were mad at her and she's like a super sweet lady and right. it wasn't her fault but it got really tough yeah how do you like how do you deal with that or how do you deal with like maybe a neighbor that says that the landlord won't take care of the bed bug issue because I've had someone else call that says um, they've been living with cockroaches and bed bugs and they were literally moving from Brockton to Boston because the the person that owned the property refused to treat anything and um, she wasn't, like she was having two of her kids stay with her grandparents because she didn't want them in there, but certain ones couldn't stay there, so they were with her. It was just a terrible situation. Yeah. Do you know, like, what do people do in well, that well, situation? Well, typically if you have a problem, if you're a private owner, you want to report to uh, a tenant at a private owner, you'd want to report to them directly. Right. It may require documentation. You might have to uh, kill a bug or two, keep a sample. Right. Um, obviously, they don't, you know, a, a documentation could be a photograph afterwards. And just to show the condition, and then give the re you know the landlord a reasonable time to address and remedy the situation. If not, um, there's other options they could take. They could contact um, either a social service agency. They could contact uh, housing, you know, housing court. There's ways of you know, trying okay, to force so the situation. Okay, is there a rule that if you're a tenant, your landlord has to um, help you with this type of bed bug animal infestation, or is it just like? If you if the landlord doesn't do it, you can always move or what? It, what is it? Well, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, know? first yeah, of all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I I, what either. I would recommend first is you know you try to obviously address it at the local level. So that would be the landlord first. If the landlord's not um, helping you, you, contact the board of health. The board right. of health could reach That's out to I you. That's what I suggested to her. And um, you know that could begin the process. Sometimes you know they could come out, do an inspection, say yes, this is in fact the pest control company, um, and there are other ways of you know getting the work done. And so how would you suggest people keep from having bed bugs? Is there a foolproof way to avoid <laughs> bringing bed bugs home? There is not a foolproof way. Um, you know, it, the, the bi biggest reasons would be not taking anything secondhand. Um, I think a lot of people would take them in that way. Um, but you can get them anywhere. Uh, planes, shared luggage hold, uh, holds where somebody might have something in their luggage and, it, and they get transferred. That blows my mind that it's, you can get it while you're flying in the plane. Yeah, That's it's, nuts. Uh, it, yeah, and movie theaters. I mean, nobody's going to want to go to the movies after. I this, know. But, <laughs> I'm afraid what to say. It's, um, it's, it's, you can pick them up anywhere. I can pick them up anywhere uh, outside of work right. even. But it's, a, it's just a question of, you know, if you see something, even just one, you're not sure what it is, put it in a Ziploc bag, you can always have your pest control provider come out, take a look, positively identify it, instead of a wait and see approach. Where are they like little red things? Aren't they like little gross red things? Yeah, we like I've to say they it. look, an adult bed bug looks, is about the size of an apple seed. Right. So you can yeah. see them. A lot of people don't realize, you know, they think they're microscopic and they're not. The, the first stage, nymphal stages are very small, but as they grow and go through their stages, they're visible and you can see them. So uh, they will hide, but uh, if you see something, save it or have it identified by somebody. That way it's, you know, not festering and, and it, gets, right. it gets solved quickly. Um, it's when things just get let go that they perpetuate and, and just become a problem that becomes more difficult to control later down the line. I know that when I go to the um, hotels or I'll go somewhere, we always, you know, my sister's crazy about this. She's like, we're going to rip all the beds apart. <laughs> look at it. And I'm silly that I'm, I still do it because yep. she's trained me to do it but 
Is that a good practice that when you're in a hotel, you should be, do they hide in like the little, is that where you can find them in the little, um, what is it called, the little? The, the seams of mattresses. Yeah, the seams of mattresses. Is that where they're? They, if, if they, they could be anywhere. They could really? Be the, the nightstands, the headboards. Really? The, yeah. If, Drawers. If you wanted to. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. If you want to try and really narrow it down, the bed bugs are attracted to CO2. So they're attracted to our exhale. When we exhale, that's what they're attracted to, aside from our body oils. Wow. So generally, if you were going to have some kind of infestation that was really going to be starting somewhere, a lot of times it would be on the headboard side of the bed is where really? you might want to look first. But wow. again, they can be anywhere. That's just a little tidbit huh. that people might find helpful. <laughs> so gross. Yeah. <laughs> and so if nobody's around for them to feast on, what happens? Like what if they, what happens? Do they just die? What? They can go dormant for up to six months, I believe. Yeah, they, an adult bed bug doesn't. No, so they yeah. don't have to eat for six months. This is, sounds longer, like a horror yes. movie. They, they can't even, potentially even longer than that, but it's, you know, up, up to a year, but generally it's, yeah, they You're don't, they don't need me. a blood meal. Yeah. That's, so, and that's another reason so why what they're do they difficult. Eat? They just, they will either seek out a new host somewhere or, and move, or they can, again, just lay in that in that spot. They don't need that blood meal, and they'll wait. And Oh, my yeah, God. So. That's scary. Yeah. Kind of gross. Yeah. Another thing that makes them that much more difficult to control. It's because like end can, of times, yeah. like the cockroach. Can't they live through anything almost, right? Uh, they're yeah. pretty resilient. Yeah. Right. So. Wow. Um, what other things about bed bugs do you think people should know at home? Well, we always say, you know, it's, uh, if you see one, see something, say something. So right. we want anyone, whether it's the tenant themselves, a visiting family member, a uh, social service person, anyone coming by. So if they know they're interacting with a family member or a friend and they know there's a problem, make sure that someone at our agency knows about it. So if you're a public housing resident, so we can treat it. We wow. want the problem to go away. The only way we're going to get it to go away is if we know that there's an issue. Right. Yeah. Some people may not realize that they have a problem because people think that, oh, they'll show us bites and try to tell us that, oh, I, I think I have bed bugs because I have a skin irritation. You can't always go by that. Some people have no reaction to a bed bug bite. Really? Some people have a delayed reaction and some people have an immediate reaction. So you might think you're getting bitten at home, but you went somewhere, but you had a delayed reaction. So if you're having skin irritations, you're not sure what they are, you're not finding evidence of, of insects, what we recommend is a lot of times they go see a dermatologist so that dermatologist could rule out that it is insect related or not. Um, oh, really? That's, yeah, it's something that we'll, we'll recommend from time to time, just if, if there's nothing there. But an inspection by a professional pest control provider would be what you would want to do prior to that. Right, so sometimes if people, are you able to find them when people can't? Like, I'm just an average person, I'm not an insect sure. person. Yeah, I, you know, we're just, we deal with it so often that we just know where to look. There are other signs, they leave droppings, they leave casts, uh, cast really? skins as they grow, they shed their, their no. yeah, yeah, just like a snake would, it, it sheds its exoskeleton, so. Would it look like a snake's, like that kind of see-through yellow thing? It's, or? yeah, it's generally more opaque than a live bed bug would be. You can, but yeah, you can see them, they'll be discarded there, but. Really? Um, they can hide in, in a lot of small nooks, crannies, cracks, crevices of bed frames. They prefer to get into the wood of, of these really? frames. So. so not in, see, I always thought it would be like in the fabric mm. part. They can be, but they'll get into those areas too. So if it's not in the fabric, you need a powerful flashlight to be able to see into some of these harbor areas that right. the normal person just isn't aware of. I wouldn't so. even know that area was there, right? <laughs> yeah, so if you right. don't know it's there, you can't even yeah, look for it. Right, so. Oh, that's scary. Yeah. Yeah. So um, with the bed bugs, you were saying that they may have come here from more travel, or what's, have they always been this resilient? Well, well, <laughs> um, yes, they have, okay. but we also, there was a product called DTT, DDT that used to be used way back before the EPA came along, uh, so those products really wiped out everything, um, and then they made a big resurgence with you know, later on down the line with international travel and the EPA came along and restricted some of the products that were used in the field. Oh. So, um, you know, which is a good thing. I'm not, <laughs> that's not, that's, right. that, that is what it is. But um, as more international travel became, you know, more common, they made that resurgence. And, you know, up until 15 years ago, pest control companies would run into the situation and be like, what are these? <laughs> they, right. Because people hadn't seen them. Um, but they've been around for a long, long time. They actually originated back in the days of the caveman. So no they're, way. they're a direct descendant of the bat bug. The bat bug came down from the caves, fed on the caveman, and that became our common bed bug today. And, really? A bat yeah, bug? Yeah. What do you mean? And they we fed still on run bats? Into, yep. And we still will occasionally run into bat bugs even today. So 
Yeah. Do they look the same? They do. They look very much. They look very similar, but you'll usually see them <laughs> higher on the walls and things like that. But there are. You need a microscope to tell the differences for the most part. But, oh, really? Yeah. But, That's interesting. Yeah. So don't take anything that you don't, like. So some people I've heard, and and I don't want to say they're just elderly people in housing because I think it happens everywhere. I, my dad has passed now, but even before he was elderly, right. he would pick up stuff from the side of the road. <laughs> oh my God, my mother would be like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "Oh, this is a great couch." She's like, "No," yeah, because right. she was snobby, not because she was wearing <laughs> bed bugs, right. but like. Um, because I hear that people do do that. How do you, number one, um, what would your advice be about taking stuff off the side of the road? And number two, how do you, if you do have bed bugs, put the stuff out and make sure nobody takes it? What do you do? So enforcement is difficult for us. Right. And so uh, you'll find residents that share furniture, you'll find, or um, they're giving furniture away because they have new things coming in, or they'll go to yard sales. And so we can't... Um, control necessarily 100% of what they do, but we would just tell them to exercise caution. You really have to be observant, um, like a pest control expert, to kind of know where they might hide, where they might be, because you would think you're just getting a nightstand. Right. But they couldn't be in a nightstand. And well, it's they hard. Absolutely... There's no way they're going to be right. there. So if you think of their, um, they're the height of a paper, you know, uh, like a thickness of a paper, or two pieces of paper together, so they're that thin. Oh, so they're thin. So they could get into the folds, or they can get into a drawer, or behind a drawer, or up underneath, and so if you're just grabbing something from the side of the road to pay for something, you don't necessarily know what it is, and it's even harder when you have furniture, because they could get underneath um, seats, they could get underneath uh, covers, anything that's really padded, so it's very difficult, and then that makes their job much more harder to treat as well. So. We, oh, and you're freaking me out. Well, this is, <laughs> what, we, this is what we have to deal with. I but. buy, like, cool, like, cabinets that are, like, really old, and I'll redo mm. them. And now I'm starting to think, I always thought I'm not bringing anything home because I looked it over and I yeah. cleaned it out before I came in. But if they can get into the little crevices, it's scary. So a lot yeah. of times you'll find if people travel, they'll say, you know, if you have the opportunity not to bring the furniture directly in or the, the luggage directly in, keep it outside for a couple of days. Then when you have the chance to really look at it, um, look at it, but meanwhile, you would take your clothes in a, like a clear bag directly into the dryer first. Wow. Dry your clothes first at high heat and then wash them and then throw away the bag in case there was anything residual. So they're, they're really pesky pests to deal yeah. with. Yeah, and, you um, have to be really efficient. observant. Yeah. And so it, it is hard. And so, you know, a, a person not trained to identify them or look for them is going to struggle with that. And that's why if there's any sort of an issue or any sort of a question, we want the resident or a family member or someone to advocate to call us so we can bring a professional out to look right. at it, to treat it. Yep. Wow, that's scary stuff. Mm -hmm. So way back when, I wanna say maybe four or five years ago, they were having a big problem at um, Camp Hello High Rise, and I had talked to someone at the housing authority that works with you, and I can't remember who it was, maybe it was you, but I don't think so. And they were saying that they would treat an apartment the resident would throw the tra the furniture or the bed or whatever they had to do out, and then other residents would just go out and take it right back into their apartment. Are you still seeing that? Do you think people are catching on with this we issue? We still see residents try to go, you know, recapture or claim things that uh, maybe they need in their apartment. And so if we do see it outside that um, we have an issue, and unfortunately um, we have to dispose of it and get rid of it. And so yeah. we'll lock things in uh, some of the high rises, the areas outside where they have uh, pens. We'll keep them basically penned up until we can oh, dispose so of them. Oh, so that's what you do now. We try as best we can, but we will have people coming, you know, from the outside sometimes coming in to um, take stuff away. And it, it's difficult. Sometimes you'll see us try to cut up mattresses to break up uh, pieces of furniture that might look like it's okay to take. Right. Might be a nightstand, but honestly, if we don't want to have the problem, sometimes they'll have to break it up. Take a sledgehammer, break right. it up. Spray paint bed bugs right on it. There's the right. whatever Isn't you need, whatever the needs to, way. whatever needs to happen. Sl you know, whether it's like you said, cut it up or um, just make it unappealing for someone mm -hmm. to want to take if if you can. But do you think certain communities have more bed bugs than others? Like, is Brockton more tr troubled by bed bugs than say like Whitman or how do you? Well, it might be because there's. Uh, denser, you know, a, a greater population, and um, sometimes you have uh, more people living in, you know, one building than others. If it's a smaller community, bedroom community, the biggest building they might have is two family or three family. Right. Where in Brockton, you'll have high rises, you'll have uh, multi-families, and so there's more opportunity because it's a bigger community, but, you know, Boston has them, Fall River has them, right. all the big cities have them. Towns have them, they're just not maybe as public because you don't hear it as much. How do you get rid of them? Out. 
Like forever. Like how could we say we're going to do this so we don't have them anymore? What do we do? Is well, there anything we can do? Well, I think he alluded to, you know, uh, DDT was the chemical, very uh, the true chemical that they use. Now it's a variation of that. So it's not oh. the same strength. And so no, yes. he can explain, but they will basically rotate the chemicals because they become resilient to them a little bit. Oh, really? Resistant to it. Well, and yeah, and, and not only that, being proactive, once, you, once you've identified a problem, it's been treated, you can be more proactive. There's monitors they make where, you know, we can come in and, and check monitors and put monitors down or, or just schedule quarterly inspections right. where, you know, a uh, pest professional would come in and, and flip those mattresses and, and just do an inspection. You know, even that alone can, um, you know, at least limit those units that would have a problem for a year and a half that doesn't get reported and right. has been infesting, it, which is what they do. So that's why we do that. So you can be proactive with it um, instead of just reacting to the situation as it comes up. This might be naive, but so when I moved into my little house, that's like a crazy fixer-ripper falling apart problem for me, which is very difficult, but that's my own problem. We had this mouse problem and I think we had um, Burgess, Okay. Burgess Pet come in right. and help us out, and that was great. <laughs> but they just kept coming back. They were like field mice. I mean, and you know, so we got a cat, and we've never had another problem. <laughs> and my neighbor, um, he even told me later, was complaining. He's like, oh, those two cats. Blah, blah. And his wife says, no, shush. Since they got the, those yeah. cats, we haven't had one mouse in our house. So my cats are actually even helping them. Yep. Is there something like that for bed bugs? You can just say, like when people complain to me about mice, I say, oh, just get a cat. Yeah. You'll be fine. Uh, if I had something like that, I'd be rich. Okay, <laughs> there, okay. Unfortunately, it is not. Um, yeah, you, all you can do is try to be proactive with it, do inspections, um, monitoring if, if you can. Uh, but yeah, there's no magic bullet, unfortunately, for it. It's, uh, it's kind of like bees. You kind of take them as they come sometimes. Yeah, I love there's bees. There's no way to really prevent them from I was from driving the other want. day, felt, felt like I was getting bit, and I mm -hmm. was. It was like two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> and like this, off it went. I was free. Yeah. But it was, yeah, so, what are you going to do? Yeah. So. so we only have three more minutes or two more minutes, but so we don't pick up stuff on the side of the road. Correct. That's a good yeah. idea. Yep. Use furniture. You might have problems. Correct. And um, senior citizens, like I felt so bad for this lady at the Caffrey Towers. She had had a bed bug problem and some of her friends were saying that people won't even sit next to her because they're afraid mm -hmm. they're going to jump on her. But she right. had had everything. Yeah. Right. Cleaned. We, we do not, you know, at housing, we don't care how they got them. We right. want to treat them. So the stigma that, you know, this person has them or they got them this way, no one truly knows that. Right. We don't right. know how it, how it originated. We want to get rid of it. So we would, if we knew something like that, we'd probably have the asset manager, um, wouldn't identify particular people, but just have a general discussion. We do host meetings regularly where we'll have one of the two pest control companies come to address a residence. And we would just say the same thing, that we don't care how they got here, we want to get rid of the problem. Right. Uh, we don't know if the neighbor brought them, we don't care. We just right. want to uh, you know, get rid of the problem. So as we said, we, we're proactive at the housing authority. Uh, we meet monthly with the asset managers, the service coordinators, both pest control companies and some preparers. And we talk about problems in each of our developments, whether it be uh, mice, roaches, or bed bugs. So if they have bed bugs in one of the housing properties, they should contact their housing maintenance folks. Right. If you're in an apartment and you have bed bugs, you should contact your landlord. And if you wanted to um, handle it yourself, you could contact Burgess Pet. Pest control. Burgess Pest Management. Yep. Pe Burgess Pest, Pest Management. management. Control. And what yeah. number is that? 508. <laughs> 587-4309. All right. Well, thank you, guys. Thank I you. appreciate you being here and talking to me about this kind of icky topic. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks but it's for good me. for people at home to know that everybody can get bed bugs. That's correct. That's and right. you can be a good person, a clean person, <laughs> meticulous person, and just be unfortunate and get bed bugs. Correct. That's right. One of my good friends, um, like you could eat off her bathroom floor, it's so clean, and she got uh, cockroaches once from like a box she brought home from the grocery store. I mean, they got rid of them, but yep. she felt really bad about it for a while. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. So I want to thank you guys for being thank here. You. I really appreciate it. And I thank you all for watching this segment of Good Government with Michelle Dubois. I'm honored to be your state representative. And please feel free to reach out to me if I can be of service at the office, 617-722-2011. Thank you. Thank you.